So, Brian, it is so lovely to have you here today. Thank I'm you, Randy. Of, I, I want to have the, the quiet and soft music coming in now. Not this, you know, not our normal level of, you know, energy because Neuralink last week broke the internet and I had people crying last week. What were your impressions about the Nolan story? So a lot of people just despise all things Elon without using their brain. Uh, this guy's using his brain to control a mouse. This isn't for everybody to use uh, so that pop-up ads can be inserted in your dreams. This is a new way for people with, uh, I mean, horrible, uh, catastrophic injuries to regain some control over their lives. The fact that he was on stage and giving his side of the story was wonderful. This is, and people say, well, this isn't even groundbreaking. Well, then why are you complaining? Uh, it's a great story. It's a step forward for people with profound uh, short uh, shortcomings in their ability to uh, interact with the world. And it's just one small step in the beginning of what's going to be a very huge industry. So Elon says he has a monkey seeing already, but I think that's kind of out of order. Monkeys have already been doing. Yes, but doing is, I'm going to say, quite a bit easier than seeing because visual data, I think, is a lot more complex than a, than 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 operating a mouse. So that would be something that I haven't heard of before. And if monkeys can see this way, whew, we're, that would be another very huge step. Now, I don't know if you would be as likely to get FDA approval to work on this in humans because a loss of vision is different than a loss of movement, um, but remains to be seen. So you uh, have- uh, seen. Yeah, Yes, yes. So you have- uh, <laughs> So you have uh, Elon saying that this would be low resolution, kind of like some of the early games that we played on the computer. Um, if I couldn't see it all, I think any resolution would be plenty of resolution. Yes. <laughs> I could in terms of your, <laughs> yes, in terms of your safety in the space in which you occupy, having some data is infinitely better than no data. And uh, if I was completely blind and had a choice between remaining in the dark or having limited vision. It's an easy choice. Yeah. So I'm guessing just, uh, you know, thinking about it in terms, I hate to, you know, turn it into something. So, you know, monetary and whatever, but uh, I'm guessing there'd be a kind of a line around the block um, at about a hundred thousand, even, even if it was a hundred thousand dollars to do what they did to Nolan or to provide that amount of sight. I think there'd be people, uh, the, the list would be long. I agree. The list would be long. And I don't think, I honestly don't think money is the main factor. Money allows them to continue doing what they're doing. Uh, but money isn't the goal here. The goal is, is the mission. The goal is, is to get people their lives back. Um, I don't see this turning into something that is an assembly line where you're just cranking out money and people are looking at the dollar signs though for the competition, that could be it. The competition could be looking at this and saying, we need to start making these breakthroughs, these advancements in technology as well, because we see dollar signs like a lot of things that Elon's companies do They're first, they make fun of him. Then they, you know, copy him and then it's over. But uh, I mean, it's the same with Apple. Oh my gosh, getting rid of the keyboard. What a, what a ludicrous idea. It worked. And a lot of the things, you know, Tesla was the first company to put the batteries in the floorboard. Everybody else before that had just put them in the trunk or behind the seats or in the transmission tunnel. And Tesla said, you know, nobody really notices how thick the floor is. Let's put them there. And it has a lot of other advantages. And immediately everyone copied. With the Giga Castings, that idea had been around for 20, 30 years, but no one had ever done it. And now we see, if you follow Luca Greco, fantastic follow on X, he's watching all these companies around the world buying these machines, installing them, and beginning to use them because the advantages are so clear once you've let someone else blaze the path for you. So it is, uh, yeah, this is just one more of those where Neuralink is getting ahead of the 
of the pack. And now the rest of the pack is saying, oh yeah, we should be doing this too. And the winner is the people who need this technology. Does it have risks? Of course. Is it a permanent solution? We don't know yet, uh, but it so far it's working and the people taking the risks understand the risks and that's good enough for me. So on a completely different subject, I am starting, Brian, a new clock, a new countdown clock to July of 2025. It occurred to me this morning that 15 months from now, it will be the second half of 2025. And mm -hmm. a few things are kind of supposed to come true on the second half of 2025. And that would be, oh, Gen 3 cars. That would be, oh, Optimus uh, robots. Oh, that would be maybe RoboTaxi. That's no promise there because it's two weeks from now, of course, that the RoboTaxi will be done or later this year. Two but weeks. Two I'm weeks. just going to say, I'm just going to say that at this point, 15 months for RoboTaxi begins to seem realistic, given what we're seeing on FSD 12.3. So, boy, 15, I'm, should, where where can we put the clock? If you got a spot on your wall, maybe. A... Oh, boy, I think I'll, I'll check my wall, but it, it looks it looks pretty full of nothing right now. So I don't know if I could make room for it, but that would be an interesting one. You should have that. You should have that countdown clock behind you. That's right. Uh, that I could be. Spots, right? Just put it on the shelf. Cover up those those ugly books. <laughs> <laughs> Best selling author Randy Kirk. Uh, I had a chance to experience uh, version 12 last week on two different cars, an X and a Y. And I also had a chance to experience, uh, to do a test loop where I did the same run in my car on version 11 and their car on version 12. And on version 11, it, at, it needed, there was a, a disengagement and two interventions in a very short drive, a six mile drive in California, three miles out, three miles back. At one point it tried to change lanes into a bus stop. That's <laughs> not a place cars go. There's no out way. Oh gosh. And it would just like stop. And has, and then it, when it was turning across traffic, it thought, you know what? I'm going to stop here. Please mm -hmm. don't stop in traffic. Um, ever. When, yeah. Never do that. Uh, and I'm now that I use version 11 most of the way back home, it did pretty good apart from when it uh, wanted to, uh, when it wouldn't, it, it was, it was raining. And so on the highway, it just, it, it said, if you want to go 10 under the speed limit, I'll let you do that with no lane changes. Uh, but otherwise you get got to drive yourself. Version 11, if you just looked at that, you'd say there's no chance autonomy is coming ever. Uh, but uh, the version 12s we did, we did the same drive. And I, one of the comments on the video was, I had to watch this to the end to find out it was boring. There was nothing wrong with version 12. It just, it just drove out and it drove back. And that was it. We were done. That was it. There was no intervention. <laughs> there was one intervention because he forgot that he wasn't driving and changed and hit the blinker in the car. Oh, right. I'm not driving. I, uh, I didn't need to do that. Uh, <laughs> So there was an accidental intervention because it was so natural. It felt, it felt so smooth. It felt confident. So seeing version 12 in action gives you hope. I have once again subscribed to FSD. I bought a three month subscription and I am 10% of the way through it and don't have version 12. Wow. Apparently the, the branch that I am on the 2024 dot, whatever um, is not yet getting version 12. And that's very frustrating, but. Yeah, we don't have ours. We don't have ours either yet. I saw some kind of a of, of a diagram this morning suggesting that only about a third of the people have received it so far, and so we'll we'll see. Maybe a third maybe, is pretty good. Third's pretty good. So yeah. this morning I showed on my video my early morning my after the bell uh, program a yet another company with now it's called Q the robot. Now maybe you've seen Q before. This is my, my first time to see Q. He could shoot, shoot bullseyes with a bow. Oh, well, and an arrow. He had a bow and an arrow. And he could shoot That's bullseyes. That's helpful. <laughs> he could fetch. No, just the bow. Ah. Just bow. <laughs> he could fetch your drink from the refrigerator. Um, and the company was saying one to two years. Um, so then, in addition to that, Tesla placed an ad for a technical writer to create use instructions for Optimus on top of the hire that they had last week 
for somebody to uh, go out into the real world and work with uh, optimists in real working situations to uh, make sure that they are, you know, doing a job. Um, uh, is it really going to be all the way to my clock countdown of seven to one before we see these things actually uh, operating in factories? It sounds to me like we're getting really close. The thing about X that's so wonderful is you get a post like, here's this opening for a technical writer for Optimus. And then in the replies, you see context that may be valuable. One bit of context I saw was the, the way it's written, it doesn't necessarily mean it's for Optimus. It could be for anything in their robotics division, which could also be their industrial robots. It could also be the single use robots. So it doesn't, it doesn't guarantee that they're writing the manual for Optimus today, but it could be that they're bringing in the writer who will be writing for it because they want them to be sufficiently actively involved early on that when it comes time to write it, whether that's in six months or three years, that they've got a depth of understanding. That means that their first draft isn't garbage. It just needs a few tweaks because they have a personal understanding of how the product works and is meant to work from years of working with the team. If you look at they, they were hiring something like a hundred new positions for Optimus. And you say, boy, that's, that's a lot of money going out the door. And I'd argue it isn't. Let's just say a hundred grand each. That's $10 million a year. That's nothing. That's pennies. So adding another person, even at 80 or a hundred thousand is just not that much money in the, in the grand scheme of things for a company with cash flow and cash on hand like Tesla has. So they're in a unique position. A lot of these robotics companies are desperate for cash and will wind up beholden to a venture capital fund or some outside interest that controls what it is, how it's deployed, how it's monetized, when it's monetized, where Tesla has a, the luxury of enough cash on hand that when this program started, unlike the metaverse, when the metaverse research began, we watched it hit the balance sheet every quarter, billions and billions going out the window for what? And we couldn't see where the money was going. And it was a whole, whole lot of money. With this, the R&D is so small, it doesn't really register. It doesn't look like a huge increase in spending has occurred. And that's how you want to do it, I think. Well, so somebody did post this morning on X. I don't know if you saw it. It was a manual that's already been written with hmm. chapter headings and everything, not the details, but just the the names the the, the names of the chapters uh, for the operation of a uh, of a uh, Optimus, and the interesting one was uh, it was chapter seventeen I think, um, and it said uh, Terminator mode, which is an optim which is an optional upgrade, and said it was coming soon will also be a disable Terminator mode. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this the manual looked real, although you know somebody could gin it up just for fun, but because everything else except for number seventeen was pretty boring, just normal stuff. Anyway, did you have did you happen to see that manual? <laughs> I didn't see that one, and the inclusion of Terminator mo mode suggests to me it that I would have a, a high level of skepticism of its authenticity, um, and I don't know why they would have started the manual in a form anything other than just some notes at this point. I think that's very suspicious. <laughs> so, you know, Brian, uh, I'm assuming that you have your car speaking to you for many years now, you know, uh, turn right. Uh, you missed the, you missed the uh, turn, tur turn around at the next. Anyway, we've all had our cars talking to us now for, I don't know, a decade. And everybody has the choice of all these voices to have the car speak to you in, but it's only speaking to you for, you know, a little tiny bit on each ride. Uh, but it turns out that men choose a male voice. Did hmm. you know? Because Did not they, know that. Because they have plenty of nagging from women already has been the suggestion. I don't know if that's the real reason that men are choosing a male voice or not, but that has been the suggestion. Anyway, when you get your Optimus for home use, what voice do you think you'll choose? 
So my guess would be, I always go with the default voice. I know my kids love to monkey around and, and play with the different voices, but I find that the default voice is the one that gets the most support. So if there's any need to do updates or uh, add new pronunciations or anything like that, the default voice is the one that's going to get it first and most. So I always go with that. I did really like the voice that they were using was it figure AI's bot where it was talking to you about why it handed you the apple, why it put the plates and dishes away. Uh, I thought that voice was very neutral, very calming um, and very confident. Um, but I am also confident there are a thousand choices that would be just as good. And I'm happy to trust the engineers. Brian, I, I mean, that was such a setup for a comedy routine. I mean, you know, come on, Brian. I might have to take away your license or something. I mean, I gave it to you. I, 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 I threw it up. It was a, it was a bump. You could have spiked it. Gilbert Gottfried. Is that who I'm supposed to use? <laughs> Bobcat Goldthwait. That's, that's a voice I definitely want following me around all day. <laughs> so Tesla is no longer compute constrained. What possibilities does that open in your mind? All of them, all <laughs> of them. And I believe it because the changes between 12, one, two, and three strike me as evidence of this. They have a weird little case. They dump in all the testing they need. And a week later, a solution is out. So it definitely feels like they are not compute constrained. What comes next? Improvements, very small refinements that may not even be noticeable to the majority of us, except we say, oh, it used to goof up on this thing and now it doesn't. Uh, so I'm, it, it, it allows for smarter traffic routing. It allows for smarter uh, navigation in terms of weather, weather and wind. It allows for everything. So it uh, could also allow for um, Dojo as a service. It could also allow for um, other kinds of activities that Dojo can do uh, outside of just uh, full self-driving. I guess, I don't know enough about that. It is my belief that you would need to be over uh, capacity by at least 10% before you start thinking of making the service, of making your server time available to someone else, uh, because it'd be very possible, very likely that you could need that extra 10% tomorrow and not realize it today. Yeah, okay. So I know this story just broke, but what do you think about the fact that Elon will be sending checks to Zuck? Surely there should be some kind of quid pro quo. I mean, how many cyber trucks can Zuckerberg order in order to, you know, kind of trade off on this advertising that's going to go on Facebook? And is this a great place for Tesla ads? Or would it be better if, he, if he's going to send money that way anyway, should those ads be on Instagram instead of on Facebook? So I, to clarify, Tesla is paying Facebook for advertising. They're advertising on Facebook. That is the check that Elon is sending to Zuck. Uh, I think uh, the whole framing it in that way is fun, but a bit silly. Now, oh, I think oh. it's silly. Randy, you know better. It's fun, though. So I'll allow it. So is it good to be advertising on Facebook? Absolutely. I think there are a lot of people who do not uh, get their social media from more than one platform. A lot of people will not do it. There's unless there's a big distinction between them. I haven't used Facebook in years. And part of the reason is uh, Facebook wants my advertising dollars and not my presence. They won't show me what I want them to show me, which is my family timeline stuff and preferably in chronological order so I can keep up. Instead, it just mixes it all up and it's junk. And then when I would try to use it to promote my channels, it wouldn't work. They, they will bury it unless you upload the video straight to Facebook and uh, only then will they show it and you couldn't monetize. So, so well, so wait a minute, <sighs> you'll, you want my content for free. And if I try and just link it, you won't give it to me. That's a, a terrible. So then I purchased an ad for a project I was working on and uh, two days, like a day into it, they said, uh, nope, your ad doesn't work. We're not going to run it. N no explanation. Nobody you could contact. They just took my money and ran. And I said, I'm done with this. Mark, you creepy lizard. You can stop 
breathing through your eyeballs and uh, blinking sideways. And uh, I'm done with you. <laughs> so there are people. So I would never see an ad on Facebook, but a lot of people on Facebook would never see an ad on X or television for that matter. They're right. different people in different markets. And if you want to reach them, you have to find them where they are. That's why that's why the advertising boycott on X didn't work. Do you not want access to these people? Because you cannot always reach them any other way. And Randy, I've been trying to get in touch with you about your car's extended warranty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right, Brian. I think we'll wrap we, it there. We, oh, oh. we should we oh. should mention that sometime probably this week, if oh, not right. by next week, I do have an exciting announcement coming. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, follow me if you're not already so you can catch it when it happens. But probably this week, n no later than next week. Will be this amazing announcement. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, good. So if you want to follow him, assuming <laughs> that you want to follow it, I know you want to follow him. He's amusing even on his own channel sometimes. So that would be Futuraza. Mm -hmm. Futuraza. Video Futuraza uh, on X, Futuraza on Patreon, Futuraza. Is that it? Are there more? I think those are the three places I mostly hang out. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, Brian, thank you so much for coming on and helping me to understand these things that are way above my head. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.